Good evening. I'm Pastor Nick Van Dam. I serve Anderson and Stella United Methodist Churches in Southwest Missouri. Happy Holy Thursday. It's Maundy Thursday, which is April the 9th, 2020. And I'm grateful to be here with you. And we're going to be sharing a love feast. Now, you may not have heard of a love feast before, but it is uh, very inter interconnected uh, in the early, early church with communion. It's different, and it's something that we do at uh, different times within our own denomination. Uh, it is something that we do uh, and have done in the past when a pastor couldn't be present. Um, and it is the sharing of uh, bread and a cup and remembering God's grace and uh, witnessing to the um, to the way God is moving in our lives and uh, something that was observed by the small groups. And as our bishop reminds us, that's what we are right now. We're a bunch of small groups, uh, whether we're in a, a house with, uh, with our spouse and our soon-to-be child like I am, or if you're in your house with your brother or sister or your parents or your kids, or even if you're in your house alone, but interconnected with us through, uh, through means on the internet, we're small groups right now. Um, and uh, it's for a time such as this that the love feast came about. So uh, in order to share it with you, I am diving into my United Methodist Book of Worship. Now this is a lovely book. Um, it has so many, it's such a wonderful resource, not only for the things that it provides, but the history that it shares along with it. And uh, I gave you a brief snippet. There's a few pages or a couple of pages that talk about the history and the significance and the value of the love feast. But uh, basically speaking, we, uh, we're going to be praying. There's also an opportunity to sing and, uh, and to share what God is doing and has done in your life. Uh, and that's something that we share and commune with each other. And typically the love feast occurs right before a main meal. Now, this is a tradition that the founder of Methodism, John Wesley, got uh, from some of his German uh, friends that were in Atlanta, Georgia, at a time when he was a missionary there. And uh, he observed it and, and thought it was wonderful and ended up bringing it back to England with him. And uh, it became a mark of early Methodism. It begins with a prayer that, um, that some of you might be familiar with as a hymn. It says, be present at our table, Lord. Be here and everywhere adored. Thy creatures bless and grant that we may feast in paradise with thee. He goes on. Um, John Wesley goes on to write a prayer that says, Father of earth and heaven, thy hungry children feed. Thy grace be to our spirits given, that true immortal bread. Grant us and all our race in Jesus Christ to prove the sweetness of thy pardoning grace, the manna of thy love. I'd like to pray another prayer that kind of touches on those same themes for us today. Gracious and loving God, all of creation declares your goodness and witnesses how wonderful and good you are. Holy God, we, we give thanks for the gift that you give us in Christ Jesus and how you draw us together as your people. We give thanks for this table, for this place that you have set for us, and the opportunity to experience that grace. God, give us that grace today that we may be filled to the brim, that we might then witness and share that love and mercy and grace with our neighbors, knowing and trusting that it is by your mana alone, that we are sustained now and into eternity. Bless this meal that we share. Amen. Then it suggests that we share scripture 
and the scripture that that I was always uh, taught to, to share when I was uh, sharing uh, co uh, communion with people and uh, that really brings home what it means to have a fellowship and a communal meal with other people is the scripture from Corinthians where the, the followers of Christ are reflecting on and remembering what Jesus did on Mon the original Monday Thursday. And it says from uh, Corinthians, it says, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, took the bread. And when he was given the bread, he gave thanks and broke it, saying, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you drink for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner, manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink of the cup. And that was written uh, in part because of some of the things that were going on in the church at Corinth. But it reminds us how serious, how meaningful it is to come together in this way, to share the table as Christians, to invite God into this, and to, uh, to remember the gifts of Jesus Christ. Now, when you hear about Monday Thursday, and think about it. For a lot of people, this is the image that comes to our minds. Jesus and the disciples gathering around the table. And there are so many things right about this and many things that are wrong. Uh, you'll notice they're all sitting on one side of the table, like they're posing for a picture. I, I doubt that was accurate. Another thing that a professor of mine from seminary would, would remind us is that this kind of table with them seated at chairs, that's, that's probably not how it happened. As a matter of fact, if we wanted to be truly authentic in remembering, we probably would have something set up like this. Pillows on the floor, maybe a blanket, because he was off to remind us that they ate reclining, which means on the floor. Now, for our remembrance, remembering what Jesus is doing and uh, remembering the, the gift of Maundy Thursday, we will be uh, adapting it to our present circumstance. We will be uh, using the love feast and remembering it in that way. Um, and for the love feast, for sharing of the cup and the bread, um, you might imagine something so like this, you know, uh, a very ornate cup, a uh, loaf of bread, a cross. But the wonderful thing about the love piece is it can happen where we are with what we have. So you don't have to have grape juice, welches or otherwise. I know I can get in trouble as a Methodist for saying that. You don't have to have a loaf of bread. Um, in uh, World War II, I'm told that they use crackers and water. You may have it set up, kind of like I've got over here. Got some bread and some water. It's whatever we have on hand. For goodness, to remember, to remember what God has done and is doing for us, and that God is present with us, and to invite God into the sharing of the bread. Now, after the scripture, it is recommended that we share a personal witness. And 
one of the things that I would like to witness to how God is continuing to move and how I continue to experience God's saving grace and mercy is the forgiveness, compassion, and patience that I have, have experienced personally, have benefited from personally, but also that which I have seen heaped upon other people. How people are just going that extra mile and loving on each other and and witnessing to the, the life of Christ in their hearts because of what God has done for us. People checking on each other. People that, that normally, uh, nor normally would have a really hard time getting outside of their shells, doing so to care and help for their neighbors. As we share this bread, as you share your bread where you are, you are invited to share a piece of scripture, a verse, um, a few short words, a prayer, something about, about how God impacts your life. To sing, to pray, but to open yourself up in, in that kind of way that can really reveal Christ and the reality of Christ that you experience to other people. It's something that can be challenging to do, and especially challenging when, when you feel like you're sitting in a room alone, but it is so valuable and, and such a blessing. I know that in the midst of our current uh, COVID-19, the coronavirus, in the midst of the unsettling news uh, on the, the television and on the internet, in the midst of uh, the frustrations of having to be self-isolated, um, in the midst of uh, a busyness and, and new challenges and unforeseen um, difficulties that we all are experiencing, that it is by the mana of God's love and grace that I am sustained the reality of the gift of Christ every day, every hour is, is not only what helps keep me going, but helps me keep going joyously. And so I hope and I pray that you experience that too this Maundy Thursday, as we remember that Christ, Christ took the elements, the very common elements that were around him, just like bread and water are common to us now, wine and bread were common. And he made them something meaningful. He made them something special. He made the experience with his disciples so powerful that even years later, they would be relating that, that particular time, that particular story to all that they came into contact with, so much so that it is still meaningful and an important part of our Christian life. May we experience the presence of God as powerfully in the everyday. May we share God with as much, as much enthusiasm isn't the right word, but with as much holy passion that those in our lives might not miss out on, on the grand remembrance of Jesus Christ and on the living Lord that does provide our mana every day. May you be sustained and may you be joined together at the table. God bless you and keep you. Amen.